Well, howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. <coughs> Never ever let it be said that I can't work through an illness. It's my level of dedication to this channel. As you can see, I've got this creepy crud that's been going around. It's not the flu, thank God. But it is a nasty head cold. My eyes are water. My nose is running. You see how much bigger it is. It's all red, full of snot. And I just feel awful. But it's not going to stop me from making videos on my channel. And today we have a follow-up to our ESXi install. Today I'm going to show you how to set up an iSCSI share between your Synology NAS and this uh, ESXi server sitting right here behind me so no more stuffy nosed uh, faces and, and lovely visions of sick people on your screen let's get to the video right now now this is the reason we buy these servers so we can see all these blinking and flashing and flashing and blinking lights yeah Look at that, I got all six drives and they're all of them flashing except for this one right here which has a bad tray, a little uh, light rail that uh, transfers the light from the back to the front, the little plastic piece is broken, so yeah, there you go, kiss my butt. But anyway, the other five are working, you get what I mean. And this is why I buy these servers so I can see all these lights flashing. Woohoo, this is my VMware ESXi machine. Dell R710, and uh, we're, today we're going to set up uh, an iSCSI share on this so it can uh, have a data store. Even though it has uh, data drives in it, uh, they're being used for something else and you'll have to wait for a future video to see what that is, but uh, right now we need to get an iSCSI share set up so that this thing can uh, have a data store to store its virtual machine files. So let's uh, move over to the main computer and get that done. Alright, so we're on our handy dandy uh, Synology NAS and we're going to set up some shared storage for our VMware ESXi server. So I think what we're going to do is come over here to SCSI Manager, go to Target, and we're going to create, you see I've got one for the Dell Lab, Dell Lab 2, and the IBM Lab. We're going to create one for VMware. So we'll click on Create, and we're going to call this ESXi dash Dell. Same thing with the IQN, we'll call it ESXi dash Dell. I just like to keep those consistent. Now I'm not going to enable CHAP, I don't use security on my iSCSI targets because I'm, I'm in a lab environment so I'm not real big on uh, <laughs> encryption or on passwords so we'll just leave it set to that. Now we're also going to create a new iSCSI LUN logical unit number. Click on next and we will call this uh, ESXi Dell. Now the location is going to be volume one. The capacity is going to be 500 gigabytes. And I am going to enable uh, I am going to enable thin provisioning. Um, let's see. Thin provisioning becomes uh, thin provisioning provides more efficient storage use via over allocation. However, LUNs become read only when running out of free space on the volume. Space reclamation releases uh, free storage space, such as when files are deleted. Enabling this option may enable the performance. So I'm going to do yes, but with space recla uh, reclamation and advanced LUN features. I think that's how I have the others set up. So we'll click on next. Uh, we're about to create a LUN with thin provisioning. When the LUN runs out of free space, it'll become read-only, and this may cause data loss. So you need to be aware of that, and you can set up a notification when the volume uh, runs out of space. So click Yes, and then we'll click Apply. And then we should see our ESXi Dell, and it should be ready. All right, so now that we've created the adapter, the next thing we want to do is come here and configure our VMware uh, iSCSI storage. So we'll come here to storage, come up here to configure the iSCSI adapter. Now I've already done this once so my 
targets are already appearing here, but what you would normally do is add a dynamic target right here. You would enter the IP address of the machine, which in my case is 5.3. The port you can leave at default. Then save the configuration, and then you can come back in to configure iSCSI, and then you will see all of your static targets here on that server. All right, so since we now have our Synology connected, what we need to do is create a new data store based on that Synology NAS because as you can see, we don't have anywhere to store our virtual machines. And if we're going to install any kind of virtual machine, we need some storage. So click on new data store. We're gonna create a new VMFS data store. Click on next. And now this is where all of our hard work with our iSCSI comes in handy. We'll see that we have the Synology iSCSI. <laughs> now, I'm just going to call this ESXi-Dell, just to keep everything consistent. Go ahead and click on Next. We're going to use the full disk VMFS version 6. Click on Next. We're going to use the full disk. We're going to click on Finish, and it'll warn us the entire contents of this disk are about to be erased and replaced with a specified configuration. Are you sure? And we will tell it yes. Now, down here, you'll see it's created the VMS data store. Uh, it says it's done it, uh, created it correctly. There's no errors, it completed successfully. And you will see now that it's non-SSD uh, and it's single access mode. So if we click on it and go to data store browser, there is our new data store. So, while we're here, let's go ahead and create a directory and we'll call it ISO for our ISO files. We'll create it. And now let's see if we can't upload an ISO file to that. So, let's upload, let's say, um, how about our DVD uh, for Windows 9, or for Windows 10, duh, Windows 9. Click on open. And then you should see up here that it's actually uploading the file. And if you look down here in the tasks, down here at the bottom, you'll see it's running and it's actually uploading that ISO. All right, so it looks like it was successful. We've got our ISO file. Go ahead and close that and we'll come back to our host. So we have successfully, now it's warning us the host needs to be rebooted to complete a configuration. So we're going to go ahead and tell ESXi to reboot. And we'll reboot the host. All right, so we got through it. We got it finally set up as a little convoluted the way I went around it. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, why didn't you just put hard drives in this Dell? Well, as you can see, I do have hard drives in this Dell. But why didn't I just set up a data store on one of these hard drives? Well, I have other plans for those hard drives in that Dell. One thing that's irked me about these R710s and even the IBM is that I've never put them to full use. You know, even though they're 11, 12 year old machines, they're still very powerful. And I have yet to do what I ultimately wanted to do, which we'll cover in another video. But I wanted these drives to be available as pass-through devices. That's why I went with ESXi on this unit. I has plans for it. And I killed two birds with one stone. I'm able to also set up and show you how to set up an iSCSI share. And most of my VMs will run off of my Synology iSCSI share. So there's a method to my madness, but you're just going to have to wait for another upcoming video to figure out what that madness is. But you can see I've got those drives in there, uh, and they are in use. So there you go, YouTube. Again, I'm sorry I'm ill, but I wanted to get this video out today uh, as a follow-up to my uh, VMware install video, uh, just so I can kind of complete the puzzle. Now, the next video we're going to be doing is on uh, VMware vSphere or uh, vCenter vSphere, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Hell, I don't even know what to call it. We're going to install that, get it configured now that we have the iSCSI share set up. So it's all part of this little series. So... We hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please smash that like button down below. Leave your comments down in the comment section. I love your comments. I love talking to people and sharing my 
experiences with you. Donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal. We take Patreon. The links are down in the uh, about section uh, underneath here. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please, we'd love to hear them. And please don't forget that barring some fatal illness, I will see you on the other side.